Um, OK, I'll begin my talk. So um, hello, everyone. This is Bhavna. Uh, I'm a woman with short hair, brown skin. And currently, I'm presenting this talk in one of the local events held in Bangalore, India. I'm an outreachy intern for Apache Airflow. And in today's talk, I'm going to talk about the wisdom that I learned when contributing to Apache Airflow, what Outreachy is. Outreachy is a program that offers mentorship uh, for uh, underrepresented tech people. They provide internship for making contribution to open source project. And uh, I'll begin with a short introduction about me. Um, I'm a self-taught programmer with about seven plus years of experience. I have initially worked in Zoho for about five years, and then I moved to work for Matt Street Den, an AA-based startup for almost two plus years. And then I quit the job due to burnout. And after that, I've started to make uh, active contributions to open source projects. And currently, I'm contributing uh, actively to Apache Airflow. Um, So before I begin my talk, I would like to express my gratitude to people who made this talk possible. I would like to thank the outreachy organizers for giving me opportunity to do internship. During my internship, I worked with mentors, Jarek, Ilad, and Nazir. They were the commuters for Apache Airflow. And I got, uh, I got a very amazing experience by working along with them. I also would like to thank my co-interns, Edith and Melody, with whom I worked for the project during my internship. And I learned a lot from them. Uh, I would like to tell about how I stepped into open source. Uh, the day when I quit my job, I decided to become an open source contributor. I thought it would be an easy start for me, but definitely it's uh, I picked all the list of uh, projects that I have used in work experience and started checking for all the open issues in it. Um, I took a handful of uh, uh, projects that I can go and find the issues for. And many of the projects didn't have uh, clear documentation on how to make the first contribution or how to set up the development environment for making no clear labels in the issues to make the first contribution. So uh, like many people, I started to Google about how to make the first contribution to the open source project. And I got a website like goodfirstissue.com or first time contributors. And I surfed through all these websites and collected the beginner friendly issues across many projects. And I thought the problem is solved. Uh, but actually, my problem got multiplied because I had so many issues across different projects. So I would start working on one. And if, uh, if I feel like hitting the wall in that issue, then I started to jump to the next, next issue in another project. And this way, I started to lose my focus in contributing. And uh, uh, slowly, I was very exhausted because it, uh, it was like 10 days, and I didn't make any contribution to any of the project. So I was giving up on contributing to open source. And that was when I discovered about Outreachy uh, through Twitter, and I applied for it. Uh, luckily, I got selected as an intern for uh, Apache Airflow. And uh, during my internship, I worked for the project uh, rewriting the Breeze tool from Bash script to Python script. Uh, what is Breeze? Breeze is an easy to use dev tool uh, for setting up the development and uh, testing environment for Apache Airflow. So if you are a new contributor or an existing contributor to Apache Airflow, then your development process is made simple and easy using Breeze. So it ensures you have a consistent and common testing and development environment across the platform so that you can easily replicate any issues that occur in the CI pipeline in your local machine. So uh, users Docker compose commands under the hood. project that I work involves migrating the code from Bash to Python, as it is difficult to understand debug the code in Bash. Uh, So I'll start with the first wisdom that I learned uh, when contributing to the project. The first one is clear communication in written form is very powerful. So this one stands closer with Apache's motto, where they emphasize on community over code. Uh, the Apache Software Foundation uh, 
insist on building a framework for building stronger community and they think that code is a byproduct of a very strong community so uh, if i think uh, communication is one very important tool that helps to bring build a very strong community and in project like apache airflow they uh, the communication happens in different forms like it happens in github issues it happens in slack channel it happens in the pull requests also in dev list emails so today i'm specifically going to talk about the communication that happens in requests um so as a newbie into apache airflow after raising my first pull request i was very happy that i made a contribution but little did i know that it's just the beginning because all the uh, conversation that happened after raising the pull request to getting that code merged into main branch is where i learned the most uh because reviewers comment about uh, using a better way of uh, handling the issue they comment about the coding style also about using different python libraries for solving the issue so initially i didn't understand many of the comments that the reviewers put so i actually follow a very simple loop of process after raising my pull request uh, i used to either raise the pull request in a completed form or in the draft mode and i wait for the review after i get the review i try to uh, read the conversation try to understand what the people are commenting about and if i do not understand what they mean in the comment then i to try to learn more about it go understand about that particular topic and i come back and read the conversation again so as it is in return form i can easily go back to it whenever i have a doubt uh, initially i was very embarrassed about putting my code out for review in public Uh, but slowly i began to take that process uh, positively because i uh, it improved my coding skills so i followed this loop of process and after few uh, loops i i could see that my code got refined so uh, that st that didn't stop with just uh, reading the conversation in the pull request that i raised i also took some time to read the conversation that happens in other pull requests raised by other people in the community and by reading that i could understand their code as well as i also got to know about how reviewers uh, review the code that also is one important learning i had by re reading the conversations that happen in the pull request uh so this is a screenshot of one of the pull requests that i worked during my internship i have highlighted the uh, uh number of conversation that i had with my reviewer get this pull request. Merge. This is like 128. So I, I definitely learned a lot by having uh, by during uh, this conversation phase. So until now, I emphasized on uh, uh, reading the conversation. I also learned a lot by writing my own comments for pull request. Um, so uh, when writing my thoughts into uh, words as comments in the pull request, I also felt that my thought process became clear and i also found some better way of solving the problem uh, uh writing not only actually helps to generate uh, help exchange the views but it actually helps me to generate the new uh, new views or new ideas for me so uh, as a part of the outreach they usually encourage you to uh, blog post for every uh, two, once in two uh, once in two weeks and they send you the prompts Uh, one of my mentors, Elad Kalev, he strongly advocated to post about the technical uh, details that we learned uh, as a blog post. So when I try to write the technical details as comments in the pull request, then why not a blog post? That was how I started to write blog posts, and I learned a lot by doing that. And you can check my blog post in this website link. And writing comments in the pull request became my stepping stone to write a full fledged blog post about it uh the next with this i'll go to the next wisdom that i learned um that code is not an asset and often it's a liability and you should not worry about throwing it away this is one thing uh, this is one of the wisdoms that i learned from my mentor jarek uh i will share one of the personal experience related to this this is again an, one of the pull requests that i worked during my internship so i was working on a um, uh auto complete option for breeze commands in cli and while working for this particular pull request 
I almost got the uh, got this issue fixed and got it working, but then I realized that is a better solution to solve this issue. So I had to delete all the code that I had written for the past three days because I found a better solution. Uh, I will share about how it felt to uh, uh, delete all the code that I have written. Initially, it was not very easy. Uh, I felt like I should have figured out the solution very earlier because I have spent about three days and then I thought I, I have wasted my time spending on it for three days. Then after some time, I realized that, OK, I wouldn't have figured out this solution at all because if, if I have not spent on it for about three days. I have Maybe next time, if I solve a similar issue, I will take lesser amount of time. Then the, uh, after some time, um, one of my mentors, Derek, he rightly pointed saying that the whole project that I'm working on is actually about throwing away the old code. That is, uh, throwing away the bash code and rewriting it again in the Python. So that was a big wisdom at that moment for me. <laughs> like, uh, you should not worry about throwing the code at all. Uh, with this, I'll go to the next wisdom that I learned, that you should not feel shy about asking questions. Initially, I was very scared to ask questions. I'll be like uh, uh, ask, wondering whether my questions were too simple, whether it is, what if my questions were ignored? And I have all sort of questions running in my mind before I post my question. So um, or du during the weekly meetings, during my internship, uh, my mentors shared this website link, don't ask to ask. I have highlight I have highlighted what is the summary of that uh, website then. That is, you should not ask a very blunt questions like any Java experts around, but you have to ask a very uh, a relevant uh, question with proper relevant information in it. So from then, I always used to frame my question in such way that it always has what the problem is and what are the solutions that I have tried so far, but that didn't work out, and what more relevant information. And after that, I asked for help so by asking questions this way, the question also became clear, and the chance for getting a response also actually increased. So I will share one of the experience that I had in my initial days when I was very hesitant to ask questions. Um, so during the weekly meeting, uh, one of the interns, Edith, she asked about what is Git rebase in the call. So this uh, Git rebase is a recommended approach of bringing all the code changes that uh, uh, you have to the main branch in Airflow. Uh, they recommend you to use uh, rebase rather than git merge because it has more advantage than git merge. Uh, I was so used to git merge workflow and git rebase is entirely new to me. So I had this question initially in my mind, but I was very hesitant to ask. But luckily, my, uh, uh, my co-intern, Edith, asked this question. And, and on that day, the entire call, we spoke only about Git rebase, and I learned a lot by uh, do, in that particular call. Um, see, uh, then I figured out that if alone I had uh, went and searched about Git rebase and read about it, it would have at least taken me a few hours to understand how it is working. But that was when I realized that, OK, no question is simple question, and you should not hesitate to ask questions. So also, asking question has more advantage that I will share you in the slide. So after the, immediately after the, this call, uh, this is a screenshot of the contributing guidelines in the Apache Airflow. And you can see there is a section named as how to rebase the pull request. So soon after the call, this particular documentation is heavily improved. It has all the answers to the questions that we discussed during the call. So it was, in, it was Refine in such way that if, uh, any newbie to the rebase workflow can easily understand this guideline. Uh, so this doesn't stop with updating the documentation alone. This is another feature that is enabled in the uh, Airflow repository after the call. That is, you can e uh, easily rebase the code using a single button click. So this feature is made available soon after we had the discussion with the Git re, uh, about the Git reba uh, rebase workflow. So uh, this feature is uh, very super useful for a newbie like me. And I was very astonished like how a single question asked by a person 
is made available to the entire community to benefit from it in the form of documentation, in the form of a single button click feature. And this still astonishes me. So with this, I'll go to the next wisdom that I learned, that open source is a rich ecosystem. Because I felt that each projects are interdependent on another project. I felt like it's a, like a huge for, forest. So this is, uh, this is one of the issues that I found in the Airflow project. Uh, I have highlighted the, uh, highlighted the point that you have to note down. That is, this is a issue that found a wiki dictionary bug in the Python standard library. Um, this issue was found during the flaky test debugging by a group of uh, committers in the Airflow project, and they found the issue in the Python standard library. This doesn't stop with finding the issue in the Python standard library alone. They also actually raised, one of the committers raised a pull request uh, to the Python project to fix this issue. So this is what I mean by a rich ecosystem. So when you find a bug in another project, uh, we discuss a better way to fix that issue and also go ahead and fix the issues in another project. So while this is one of the examples that I found in the Airflow Slack channel, I also have a personal experience to share. Uh, while working in the uh, Breeze project, uh, I had to use the Docker Compose command under the hood. Uh, so when I checked for the documentation in the Docker Compose command, uh, I found that it was missing some example uh, information about using the uh, flags in the Docker Compose command. So I thought I could actually start contributing to the documentation part in the Docker project. So from then, I, uh, I, I started to raise a pull request to the Docker documentation part. And uh, this, uh, I raised this pull request for the documentation part. So I took this as an opportunity. and. I'm really very really happy that I found a way into another project through Airflow. So that was why I mean that open source is a very rich ecosystem. Uh, with this, I go to the last system that I learned, that trivial things became no more trivial to me. I will explain you like how I think, how the things that I overlooked actually caused problem to me at the end of the day. Uh, so during uh, the during the internship, uh, one of uh, for one of the issues that I was working on, uh, my mentor suggested to add color code for the uh, uh, for the logging messages like error, uh, warning, info, and all the prints in verbose mode. Verbose mode. He insisted to add different color code for different error messages. So I was not very keen on adding that particular uh, uh, feature, and I kept that part to do at last. I thought it's some aesthetic changes and I can do it at last. But on the very next day, uh, I was stuck with the issue in the code and uh, I didn't know where I went wrong and I was uh, debugging that issue for about 20 minutes. And then I realized that the code is actually working and it is throwing the right error message, but I have added some random color code. So all the error message it is throwing is not visible to my eyes. So that was also one another realization like I had, like you should have uh, like things that I overlooked actually was very uh, important point. It's very vital. Uh, but I, like these simple things, if added properly, it would actually save a lot of time for users. So, and it, and this particular issue, it, it didn't stop with that. And this part is still refined by uh, one of the mentors, Jarek. So what he did is um, he uh, to make this uh, feature color blind friendly. So I have added actually the color code for different error message to make this uh, feature more color blind friendly. Uh, he added a, a feature in the breeze command where you can actually disable the uh, colors. So after disabling the colors. Uh, the error messages will be indicated. The different error uh, logging messages is indicated with different text formats like bold, italic, and combination of the text formats. So uh, I haven't worked in any project that actually takes accessibility and inclusiveness to this uh, concern. So it, I was really very astonished by this. And 
this way of inclusiveness actually makes the project like Apache Airflow more uh, best place to begin, and I'm really very happy to be part of it. Uh, with this, I end my presentation. Thank you so much.